Hi, welcome back. Remember one of the last videos where we used um, a SharePoint list called Handover Tracker and then another SharePoint list called PMO, where then we created the Power Automate transfer to bring the data from one SharePoint list to another? That was automated. That means that when the SharePoint item achieved or uh, had a certain status, then it was copied across to another SharePoint list. But what if in a different scenario you want to have control when the data comes across or gets transported to the next SharePoint list? Today we're going to try that scenario. We're going to build um, a Power Automate flow with a trigger button that you can control. We're going to change the SharePoint form with Power Apps so that it has that button and uh, we'll see how it goes. Stay tuned. Um, Give it a thumbs up if you like the video and uh, yeah, make sure to subscribe to the channel. So here we are back in uh, our handover tracker, uh, SharePoint list, where the projects first come in from the sales team maybe or whatever, and uh, they are listed here. And when, the, when they find the, the PM, who has uh, the availability to, to take over this project, then the status is uh, turns to approved and the PM gets notified and so on and so forth. That was our last scenario. So, and then the project will be copied across in the PMO where then it is managed by the project manager. And as you can see here, uh, this project gets uh, this information from the, from the hand of a tracker and then uh, the rest of the information will be filled out by the project manager. He, he or she will know then how the financial status is, timeline, blah, 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 and so on and so forth. Imagine this as an no, example, you can have whatever you need in your case uh, for, for the rest of the columns. But that's also not the point. The point is how you bring the data from A to B. The last scenario was as soon as this, this turned to approved, it was copied to PMO automatically. And um, if you did it by mistake, then yeah, I don't know. You could you should have to, you, then you should go here, delete it, change, make the changes, go back, and so on. Or maybe you could implement like an update the item uh, workflow, which uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's a little bit more complicated, but also doable. But in our scenario, we'll do something different. We will um, have the control of uh, when we transfer the data. So we will make this a little bit more manual, but then it is um, our decision when we dis when we uh, click the button. Okay, so for that, we can um, now go to Power Automate and start building the flow. So select new flow and then instant cloud flow. So as you can see here, we have either manually trigger a flow or Power Apps. So we need to call select Power Apps, of course so that we can use it in a Power App. So select Power Apps, give it a name like um, SharePoint Trigger Flow and select Create. So now it will put this Power Apps uh, action trigger at the top. You cannot do anything with it. It just uh, creates a connection to Power Apps. So next you should select Next Step and we need to get the item. So get the item from SharePoint. Select the SharePoint site. In our case is my EIL SharePoint site. The list name is called uh, hand of a tracker. And now the SharePoint item ID. SharePoint in this uh, step does not know yet what ID it should get because it is not automatically triggered. You have to pass the SharePoint item ID somehow, and that will come from Power Apps. That's the reason why here you can only see Ask in Power Apps as an option. So select that, and we will see in Power Apps uh, how we can pass that uh, information to the flow. Next step, it's uh, very simple, uh, create item. So we want to create the item that we just got in our uh, next SharePoint list, which will be in the same SharePoint site, but the list name is PMO. This will now require some information. So title was our project name. You can give that over there, the customer name, then the customer code, and also the name of the PM, which is a custom value 
and pm display name. So the rest of the information will be filled out by the project manager in this case. Select save. And um, if flow doesn't complain, then it is done. So this is now ready. We can we can also add here like send a notification blah blah. We already done that, and you you also know how to do that. In in, in this case, I want to showcase how to uh, trigger the flow in in uh, Power Apps embedded in, in in SharePoint or maybe in a completely separate Power App. It doesn't matter. It's the same. It's the same story. So our flow is ready. Now we should go back to a handover tracker, and if you, as you can see here, select new. We have the default uh, SharePoint, uh, yeah, form. So how to edit a new item or create a new item. So for that uh, to change, we have to select this drop down, and as you can see here, it says customize with Power Apps. So select that, and this will take a minute. So with the magic of video editing, two thousand years later. So we are here in our Canvas editor in Power Apps. And uh, as you can see, we have the information that we had also in our SharePoint form. And uh, I will do some uh, quick modification here since I don't like this plain white uh, screen. So I will drag this form a little bit down and also a little bit up here. And um, I will insert a label, bring it up, make it wider. Um, let's make the color of this label. You know, I like this dark blue. The text has to be white, otherwise you cannot read it. And of course, a little bit bigger, like 25. Maybe that's too big, let's make 20. Yeah. And also semi bold. And the text should say, uh, by the way, I'm all uh, doing all this uh, information uh, editing here on the right hand side, as you can see. Here's where you select the color um, for, from, from, for the text and also the, the background. And here at the top is where I edit the text and also uh, the font and so on. So uh, for the text, I wanted to say um, handover tracker, something like that. And it should be in the middle. Yeah. So I wanted also to create a similar uh, footer and bring it at the bottom so I can copy and paste that but I don't want it to say anything, so we can just delete the text. Yeah, I think that looks a little bit nicer. And uh, maybe, yeah, let's remove the attachments and uh, we don't need that, but for that we have to select the SharePoint form on the left-hand side. This is our SharePoint form here. And uh, here on the right-hand side we have the edit fields. If we select that, we can then select here, uh, remove for the attachments and uh, yeah so our form is ready i want to rename this uh title i don't i don't like that it's getting the text from parent display name and the card is locked that means it, you cannot edit it but you can if you select here on the right hand side advanced next to properties select advanced and then you can select unlock so now you have the power to change the title. And instead of getting the title from a power name, you can say here, delete that and write in quotes, project name. Yeah, that looks better. So now we want to insert the button. To insert a button, you got just go here at the top ribbon where it says next to home, it says insert. And here's the button. But if you select inside the button, you will see here on the left hand side, it's, it has inserted the button not in the SharePoint form, but outside of the form. So it is in the canvas, but not in the SharePoint form. So the button does not know what item we are currently in. And that's the problem. So here, if we select, let's make it look nicer. So if you want to select now the item it doesn't know which item it is it knows items and uh, i don't know what this else is but it doesn't know what item we are in for the button to know which item we are currently editing we should we have to put it inside the sharepoint form 
but you cannot put it inside a SharePoint form. You have to put it inside of one of the cards because if I select here, cut and paste it in the SharePoint form, it will bring it again in the canvas and not inside. So for that to um, yeah, for that to be able to be in the SharePoint form, it has to be inside one of these cards. So to do that, select the ellipsis next to the button, select cut, and then let's bring it next to the status. So in the status card, select paste. It will ask you to unlock the card. Select unlock and add. And now we should uh, make, maybe make this a little bit smaller and put the, the button next to it. Yeah, that looks okay. So make sure that the, we change the name of the button. It shouldn't say button, but say submit, for example. And um, of course the button now is not doing anything because the on select property is equals false. So if you select that and delete it, now it is asking for an action. And to insert an action, you have to go to the action section at the top ribbon here, and it's where it says Power Automate. So if you select that, Power Apps will recognize the Power App trigger in Power Automate, and it will show you here. As you can see, SharePoint Trigger Flow is the one we are um, using. We actually uh, we, we just created. So select that, and you will add it here. As you can see, SharePoint Trigger Flow is the name of our flow. Dot run, which is the action, and now it requires the item ID, which uh, so that you can find the item and bring it across to the place you chose. So as you can see here, it already it's already showing um, uh, this item dot ID. So select that, close the parenthesis, and that's it. If we select play. We can see that the button is working because it is uh, changing the cursor to a hand so that we can click it. But I'm not going to do that now. We're going to publish it to SharePoint and test it from there. So select file, save and publish to SharePoint. Next, we can select back to SharePoint, refresh the page a couple of times. So if you select new, we can see here our newly created SharePoint form, uh, in Power Apps SharePoint form. Uh, and let's test it out. Let's say um, so e so customer name is du um, zero zero pm is myself and the status is pending. So one thing you should keep in mind now that we are creating a new item, if you select submit, this will not work because this item does not have a, a, an ID yet. It, it has to be saved once so that it receives an ID. So Power Apps doesn't know what ID it has and it, it cannot pass any ID to, to flow. So for that, you will have to save it once. And after selecting, then you can select Edit. And now change the set to Approved. And if you select Submit, we should have built in here um, like a like a notification that it has been submitted, but we can check in Power Automate. Let's go back here. Um, as you can see, I've tested it a couple of times, and uh, this was ten seconds ago. Let's open it. See the get item feature. Uh, as you can see here, this was our item that we just created D zero 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 zero. And uh, if you go to the PMO, we can see it here at the bottom. We it it, it worked. So um, yeah, we, we, we could have done it in another way. For example, imagine having multiple columns here and many people interacting each, with each other in this SharePoint list and uh, some edit today, some edit uh, tomorrow the data. And in, in a s s specific day, for example, uh, three days later or so on, you want to transfer the data and interact and um, notify the PM. So at, at that moment, then you will change the status to approved and then you can submit because it's not new anymore. It has been uh, created uh, since uh, three days ago. But, and, and you can also make the button that it, it, it's hidden as long as the status is um, it's not approved. Uh, that's uh, something easy you can do. Or make or make the uh, submit button appear only if the form is in uh, edit mode and not in uh, new mode. That's also something uh, you can do. But uh, yeah, for the sake of this uh, video, we didn't uh, do it. Otherwise, it will become like an hour. 
Yeah, so that's it uh, with this video. Uh, as I said, I think it's very helpful for SharePoint lists where ma many people interact with each other and collaborate. And um, you, you want to have, for example, one person who decides, okay, every, all the data needed is now in there and the PM can 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 start working and we can transform the data in the PMO or whatever SharePoint lists you, you might have. Uh, but if it's a SharePoint list where only you are working uh, and nobody else, I don't think I don't think you need something like that. You can use the, then the automated uh, function. And um, yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. Um, if you did so, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and uh, catch you on the next one.